Grace and peace be to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. I remember seeing Star Wars for the first time. The iconic music and the scrolling words in space. Ta-da! I knew it was going to be a great movie. I knew it was going to be a wonderful ride. The gospel writer Mark starts like that, with a shot. In 20 verses, there's the announcement of the gospel, short scenes from John the Baptist, Jesus' baptism, the temptation in the wilderness, picking up a couple of disciples, and then in verse 21, da, 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 Jesus is off and running in his ministry. The scene takes place in Capernaum, a thriving fishing town on the northwest shore of the Sea of Galilee. Jesus goes to the local synagogue. Now, most synagogues did not have enough members to have a rabbi, so the local synagogue elder would invite visiting teachers to speak. This is probably the case with Jesus. Immediately, people recognize something different about Jesus' teaching. The scribes, the Jewish biblical scholars, if you will, were versed in the text and quoting what everyone else said about the Torah or the Jewish law, what we know as the Old Testament. Jesus taught by sharing his own thoughts, his own interpretation, rather than simply reiterating other rabbis' thoughts. So the people said that he spoke with authority. The Spirit leads Jesus in his main theme of teaching, the kingdom of God has come near. No sooner than when Jesus explained the reign of God, a man with an unclean spirit confronts him. The man appears suddenly. He's not supposed to be there. A person who was known with an unclean spirit or demon would be considered unclean and would not have been let into the synagogue for worship. He would have been separated from the religious life of the community. The man's life had been a nightmare, something out of a B-horror film. His personality taken over by forces beyond his control. His life had been robbed from him. He was in bondage, and he did not know how to free himself. This unclean spirit within him confronts Jesus. Mark tells us the spirit knows Jesus. He recognizes Jesus' authority over evil spirits in the same way that the people in the synagogue said early that Jesus had authority in his teaching. The demon knows who Jesus is and that Jesus can stop him. Jesus is there to destroy the power of evil in the lives of the people that he meets. Only Jesus can stop the nightmare the pain, the anguish, the loss of self, and the loss of freedom. Jesus tells the unclean spirit to be silent. Mark uses that same word when Jesus stills the storm. Evil is muzzled by the Lord of grace. It has no voice, no power over Jesus. Come out of him, Jesus commands. And immediately the man is made free from that which held him captive. His freedom is restored, and he now stands in that synagogue clean, made pure by the word of Jesus. Jesus brings freedom from the forces that capture us. Teaching and healing and restoring are those core things of Jesus' ministry. Jesus exercises his divinely given authority, and it leads to freedom. The man with the unclean spirit is released from spiritual bondage and is now rejoined to the community. It's important for us to remember that the main emphasis in Mark is on the meaning of the story rather than the events themselves. I recognize as modern people it may seem easy for us to dismiss the idea of 
evil demons. And yet even science does not claim to be able to explain everything that happens to us in human life. Evil as a force that kills life and freedom is a reality. Anyone who has watched a TV show about serial killers or read a history of the 20th century can see that. The Gospel writer Mark is telling us that Jesus, the Messiah, the Son of God, is fighting a struggle to the death against the powers of evil in every shape that it might take in our human life. And he ensures, through his authority, his final victory over the forces of evil and sin. Where Jesus is present, demons cannot stay for long. And unlike what you see in the movies, demons cannot stand up to the power and the authority of Jesus. The struggle with unclean spirits is only one form of this larger battle. Jesus, as the Lord of life, brings healing, restoration, and ultimately his triumph over death itself. I read a story recently about a celebrity. She had struggled with the forces of addiction and mental illness her whole life. Which one of those came first was not clear. When asked if she believed in God, she responded she, would be, she was an enthusiastic agnostic who would be happy to be shown that there was a God. I don't know if anyone ever did. She died at the age of 60 of a heart attack. The toxicology report revealed that she had cocaine in her system as well as traces of heroin and other opiates and ecstasy. She was never able to overcome her demons. What are your demons? What forces are within you that zap your strength, forces, choices upon you, takes away your freedom? Is it the guilt from an old and thought unforgiven sin? Or perhaps it's the shame of a bad choice. Or maybe it's fear, an overwhelming fear. Sometimes I feel that one, wondering if we'll ever get back to any sense of normal. Perhaps it's the anxiety, the isolation, the loneliness that overwhelms your spirit. Or addiction that takes away your freedom. Or anger that leads to rash decisions. Or pride that consumes and hurts our relationships with others. Let Jesus in to free you. Let Jesus' words penetrate to your very being and hold on to the hope and restoration he brings. Today, do it today. The reality is not the demons that control you, Your reality is instead love, grace, forgiveness, mercy, compassion, strength, gratitude, generosity given to us to use and to share so that the world may know the Savior who loves and restores. These forces of good will build you up and use together They can build up communities of caring and support for our families and for our neighbors. Brothers and sisters, friends in Jesus, the prophet lives among us, who is with us. God controls your future, your purpose, your reality. Come, Lord Jesus. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.